it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. fun to play with. <laughs> anyway, guys, we are at a friend's hangar. Thank you so much for letting me use it. He's inside here, so I, I can't thank him enough for letting me have a hangar to hang out in, get in some air conditioning, and wash Scrappy to meet all of you at Oshkosh. So excited to be here. And then I'm gonna get home and we're gonna do the opposite. Let's dirty this thing up and get back to work. All right, I'm off. All right. See you at Oshkosh. Probably see you down there. Okay. Gosh, as you know, I usually run behind on videos three to four weeks. So I got a few videos that I wish I could have put out before getting here, but we were a little bit busy. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. The nutshell, I'm extremely happy with the airplane. The wing surprised me. I, I did a flow analysis and a lift analysis, and the numbers weren't really believable what the computer said it would do and I was shocked to find out that it actually is working the way I hope. All right, Scrappy, well, quite frankly, it's, it's not gonna be a production airplane, never will be. No amount of therapy will ever make this moment okay. Scrappy is just for the love of aviation, to try and say, can we do something different? And maybe nothing will ever come of it, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun building it. A lot of people seem to like watching me go crazy on nuts. <laughs> Thank you. So Scrappy is about fun. If you look at the back of the plane, about the love of aviation, there's over 500 names on the back of the plane and companies and uh, 
just people that inspired me in aviation. And I kind of wanted to put that back. So probably most of the people here could probably find their name if they look long enough. But Scrappy is just for the love of aviation. And then to be able to go out and do some uh, search and rescue at extra slow speeds, which brings me to the wing. Uh, if you're wondering how the wing design is flying, uh, the retractable slats, flaps, ailerons, being able to reflex back uh, did work. When I go into a reflex position, the plane does fly faster. We'll go more into that on a later video and get into great detail. The leading edge devices, um, quite frankly, surprised me. And I have a plane that weighs about 2,500 pounds. This is the heaviest cup on the planet. And if you've watched the videos, I tried to strip weight everywhere I could. And then I'm add weight on big spars, big metal wings to carry motorcycles, solar panels, massive battery banks, 700 pound motor probably added a little bit, but. <laughs> Am I normal? Eventually it got to 20, 2,500 pounds, but I can go nine hours. I can loiter at slow speed longer than that. And on search and rescue calls, when we're going two hours out to start a call, and we are on spot for 30 minutes and then come two hours back to be able to go out and loiter on spot for five or six hours is going to make a big difference. Working my way up to being willing to actually fly it more than three feet off the ground it was the longest flight test program I've done at three to four feet because I was a little bit worried it's a new idea, a new concept. How would it actually work? So, so far the wing I'm extremely happy about. The prop, I've got some videos I'll put out on that. The prop is a fixed pitch propeller that only allows me to decide, do I wanna be really great out of the hole or good at the top? And it's actually never good at the top. When you have a prop that has a wide paddle at the tip, You've got to back the RPM back down. And so even at the top end, you'll pull the RPM clear down around 2000 RPM. And so on Scrappy, I've got a video we're gonna put out showing some of the pull tests and it's really entertaining. Shapes and colors, the likes of which I've never seen. So let's dive right into some of the numbers that a lot of people want to know. Um, how fast is Scrappy? Well, we don't know yet. I'll tell you what we do know. With this propeller and the RPM limitations at a higher speed, I set the prop to get here, and the most I can take this propeller up to was just about 50% power, and I'm done on RPM, at 125 miles an hour. So Scrappy right now has a top speed of 125. The little black lever on the side has a bit of room to go, so we'll find out what that is when we finish a new prop program I'm working on with one of the propeller companies. So that's still in the works. This prop is a design concept test for the ultimate prop, which will be uh, a constant speed. It will always adjust. Scrappy has the power to push a big paddle at low RPM. We also want to be able to go fast and there isn't a prop that's really perfect for zero to 30, like a boat prop is, and can do 150 or 160. So I'm hoping we can figure out that program and open up Scrappy. So that's yet to come. We have a lot more to do on that, a lot more testing. Well, out of combinations, now I'm bored. Diane! Right now, Scrappy has not run with nitrous. So right now, all of its takeoffs, been based out of mostly uh, Spanish Fork, Utah. Pitched to come out here. I take off, I'm about 2100 RPM. No nitrous and a density altitude of 7,000 feet, which gives me about half the thrust to weight ratio that Draco had and about half, nearly half the horsepower that this engine can make, which makes it fly a lot like a, a stock cub loaded up heavy. Or 
I can pitch it really steep and it will launch and it will get 2700 RPM, but it will only do 60 miles an hour. <laughs> but what I, don't you think that'd be fun for, well, about that long? Right. <laughs> Joke's on you, I'm into that. So anyway, that's kind of the numbers on the plane. We haven't got it anywhere into the phase where we can do any type of really short takeoff. We do just a nice couple hundred foot roll. The RPM sounds like I've got it pulled all the way off at a whopping 2000 RPM. And then we just kind of slowly roll up to 125. And as I get speed, I just keep backing it off. But the exciting thing is we did learn what I wanted to learn about bottom end thrust. And I did some tests side by side with a aircraft propeller against a boat prop and I wanted to know how big of a difference is the static thrust and it was amazing. The results told me everything I needed to know and that is I want to play more with propellers and come up with something unique for Scrappy. So we'll get to work on that. Range. A lot of people ask what the range is on Scrappy. Uh, coming out here, powered back, I was burning about 13 gallons an hour. I have approximately 120 gallons on board. Nine hours at the speeds I was going, back off for your reserves, you got about eight hours on board. Um, if I wanted to stretch that, I could slow it down to about 10 or 11 gallons an hour. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea where the range is right now. Uh, I have not hung the motorcycles off the wings yet. If any of you uh, haven't been following these builds, inside on this main structure, there is a reinforced oversized rib tied into the main structure of the wing. Those of you who are wondering, the solar panels on top, there's 18 solar panels, nine aside, producing 900 watts of power, two giant banks of batteries. The batteries in the wings are to recharge the full-size motocross electric motorcycles, one under each wing. The battery, the solar, will trickle charge the battery through the day. And then when I hook in, I can plug in 110 power. I got 110 power ports all over the aircraft. So I can plug in anything I want while I'm camping or out on a search and rescue call, which I do a bit of. And to be able to just charge our radios, charge our handhelds, keep communication going in the middle of nowhere is what the solar panels are about. But then also to be able to land, take a quiet electric bike, go out, search or play, come back in and plug the bikes into the aircraft and know that in a short time I'll have both bikes fully recharged and not have to pack a generator. So solar panels have enough power to run all my avionic systems. So if I were somewhere, maybe in Alaska, long crossing, and I had some kind of alternator failure or dual alternator failure, I can flip one switch. I have enough solar power to run all my avionics without shedding load shedding any of the components. So I can just leave everything up. If it did turn tonight, the battery banks, the big battery banks that are designed to recharge my motorcycles or run small welders or small equipment we might need in the back country, uh, we can simply run off batteries at night and, and the batteries will outlast the fuel in my tank. So that's what the solar and the batteries and the wings are about. So the solar panels are bonded in they're also bolted in. If I take the, the screws out of it, I'll probably have to destroy the panels to get them out, uh, but they're not that much money. And I have inspection base from the bottom, so I don't anticipate having to break that uh, bond. But uh, the solar panels, if I had to, they could be removed. Um, they are uh, behind the laminar flow into the attached flow area of the wing. So, um, Right now, it's working perfect. I have no negative effect at all with the solar panels. Really happy. The engine, 780 cubic inches. A lot of people have asked online, how do you get 780 when there's only ever been made a 720? It's really simple. In the 720 block Lycoming, they made a few that were white deck case, meaning it had a thicker material of aluminum on the case. All I had to do was simply open up where the piston slides in, and then I could bolt on the piston kit that makes a Lycoming 360, a 390 kit, or a 540 into a 580 kit. I use the same pistons, everything stock, there's nothing stroked, and I can just simply open that up like they convert a 540 or a 360. I did it the same way. Both of those pistons makes the 720 and 780. So um, the engine right now has nitrous on it. 
I have not tested that and gone out and flown with nitrous. I've ground tested a, bit, a little bit of it. Um, I'm gonna spend some more time on that and we'll put videos up on that. I can tell you right now that uh, when I did play with the little bit of nitrous, um, we found we needed a bigger truck to tie it to. <laughs> so that was really, really fun. Um, well, that was, in all fairness, the blade was pitched for that launch and it is a stump puller. Uh, but I learned something really fast, just how long the ground roll is when I have to pitch this blade to come out here and do a decent speed. I realized I want that power like every time I fly and uh, nitrous won't be the way to do that. So nitrous will probably be tested a little bit further for fun. I'll probably yank it off and twin turbo this beast. So we'll see how that goes. But. Did you have to hide the plane last night? Oh, no, we wrapped it in blankets. We left it out here. We got a big padded blankets. So uh, yeah, there was a big storm last night. Uh, we were a little bit worried about it. So we actually parked the truck out here. We added several more tie downs. We put big, thick padded blankets over the plane, wrapped it in saran wrap. And then we just parked the truck right here. But the wind never got bad enough, just a lot of rain, no hell. So that storm didn't do much, didn't do anything to us. I, anyone that did have damage their planes, uh, it's tragic. Uh, but I think all in all, I think all of Oshkosh fared really well. So we all got lucky. Okay. We're on the edge of the peak in the rain. Are we? Yeah. We're getting there. What? That's a tornado warning? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. My water bottle like, gauge is still there. So, we still have the water bottle gauge, so we're not quite to DEF CON 2. Take it to DEF CON 2. You heard that, gentlemen? DEF CON 2. So the frame is highly modified, if you haven't watched the videos. Um, I took a, a wrecked frame and another frame, we cut it up, we put it together. Everything's been, been reinforced for the gear, the suspension, the motor, uh, wing attach points, everything on the tail, the suspension's all been modified. So I won't go into that, but uh, it's it's slightly different. Um, wing slash, do you guys want to see these wings move? Yeah. 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 Makes a lot of noise, doesn't it? What? I can't hear you. Can't hear it over it. So you can see uh, the ailerons themselves are drooping just under 50% of what the flaps are drooping. The landing gear, if it looks a little bit like a trophy truck, it kind of is because the shocks are based off of off-road racing. Um, King worked with me to do something a little different. We had to put a special spacer inside so I could keep the nitrogen from mixing with the oil because this is uh, infinitely adjustable. So the front end of this plane can drop 20 inches. I can raise the back. I used it coming into Oshkosh. I've used it at every touch, every airport I landed on the way. Um, quite frankly, I didn't think I would use it as much as I am. I, I think uh, I've been so spoiled to come in with a Cub and, and then all of a sudden just see right over the nose. I, it's a safe taxi mode, I drop it down flat and I can literally see the asphalt right in front of me as an not Esther, I got spoiled, so I really like it. That's so awesome. Why fabric on the rudder and the elevator rather than composite or metal? Even if you look back to like a P-51 Mustang and a lot of old aircraft, the fabric saves so much weight and since there isn't a heavy load on it, it doesn't need the strength that some of the other components do. But as soon as I change, if I wanted to change my elevator to composite, I add that, that much weight to it, I now have to counter that weight on the front with a counterweight. So if I add to the back 10 pounds of material on the back side, and then I need to get it to counterbalance on that little point on the front side, because that isn't even as far back, I have to add even more weight than that. So suddenly 
I can add almost 20 pounds to the furthest moment arm of the aircraft. What's amazing is that will do more for getting me out of balance than another person in the back seat at 200 pounds. So anytime you start getting way outside the moment arm, you're trying everything you can to lighten it up. So that's why the fabric on the, the tail feathers. How many search and rescue missions do I do a year? And what influences whether I would take Scrappy over the helicopter? So it's a great question. So I've been doing search and rescue for 20 years now. Uh, I've been fly I've flown Draco on search and rescues. I had some, some great uh, recoveries and some unfortunate ones, but we were able to bring friends and family home. Uh, I've done it in Draco. I've done it in helicopters. I go clear back to my 210 days. Um, and the deciding factor between a helicopter and let's say a plane like Scrappy really boils down a lot to the range and also depends on the speed. For example, Draco was so fast that it could get on spot faster than any helicopter could and start the search or get a locate. And so Draco was used when I needed to get on spot quickly or to another town further away. And I could search and we could call life light at any point. There isn't a way to have life light go do a search. They need to be ready for when you find the person or a car wreck or anything else. And so uh, we don't have the option of something like that. So we use an aircraft um, a lot when we need to loiter. For example, Scrappy will be a loiter search aircraft that can stay on station for a very long time. My helicopter, you can usually stay on station. It's a three hour is about the average when we got the guys on our rescue gear in it. It's about a three hour uh, time frame. So the airplanes tend to fly longer. The helicopters can get down on spot. So uh, how often do I do it? 20 years ago, I would sometimes in the peak season, I live in the Rocky Mountains of Utah. When it's tourist season and people are hiking on the cliffs and the walls, or in the back middle of nowhere, I would get calls sometimes twice a day and then go three or four days without a call. Um, and then, so it was, it was constant. It was 24 hours a day all the time. Uh, you were on call and you would do it several times a week. Now with technology, fortunately, it's changed completely. I'll do, we'll do two calls in a week and then we'll go a month and we won't do a single call. GPS, cell phone towers being up everywhere. Uh, people are now able to self-rescue because they say, I'm lost, found a signal, pin drop, and they call their buddy. And so it's, it's changed so much. Um, so what's interesting is, so has the outcomes has changed a bit. Now when we get a call, we're more apt to know this is really serious. But uh, I love I love search and rescue. I'm never gonna stop as long as they'll let me fly and search. I'm gonna keep doing it. The process of developing the wing. Did I hire an outside firm? Um, did I do it myself? Uh, the answer is the five-year-old kid in me that draws and doodles when I'm laying in bed come up with the idea. He usually comes up with crazy things like big suspension, bigger motors. Um, uh, I didn't use an outside firm. Uh, the wing design uh, is completely my own. Um, so, and, and I'm really happy with it. I mean, I'm ecstatic about it. Uh, there is some of the solid work modeling. Um, I'm still learning solid works. I think if anyone here does solid works, you still learn every day of your life. Um, there were some components that got really complex and I brought in a good friend, Brigham. Thank you, buddy. That came and sat with me and some of the uh, some of the sheet metal work and things I needed some help on. So the design, the engineering um, concept, design build is my own. And then I got some great help on uh, modeling it. A uh, lot of people, there was, uh, when I first started saying, I'm gonna put an eight cylinder in a, in a cub. Um, I think the number one comment on it, mostly it was awesome. Let's have fun, right? Uh, the, probably the most negative was it's impossible, you'll never keep it cool, it can't be done, six cylinders have been tried. And um, so I agree, it, it's a challenge. But if you do the analysis and weird things like why the oil coolers way back there, there was not enough airflow for eight cylinders to do what I wanted. And so I would say they were right. Um, if you just stuffed your oil coolers 
robbing a chunk of your air up front and you did everything standard, um, you would overheat it and you wouldn't be able to fly it. Uh, fortunately, the engine temps coming out here are almost perfectly flat line, uh, mostly in the 330 to 350 degrees across the board, even the furthest back cylinders. Um, during some of my thermal testing before we came out this way, I pushed it to try and overheat it. I was able to get it a bit warm. The way I did that was I pitched the blade steeper so I could get it really flat, fly really slow, really steep. And we threw all the power at it with not a lot of airspeed in the front. I did get cylinder seven, which actually I need to step it down one more step on the gammy, but I did get cylinder seven to creep up to 400 and just sneak past 400 degrees. And at that point, I reached over and turned the dial on my dash and it opens the big belly flap. I turned the belly flap to about 25, 30% down. And that, that cylinder over 400 went right back down into the 360s, 380s with all the rest of them and they just evened right up. So, so far so good. How do I work three or four hours sleep a night? Somebody stop me. You know what, um, I don't know why um, I can do that. Um, quite frankly, this week, I'm a, I, I, and I don't say this often, I'm a little tired. <laughs> Forget your jammies, Mrs. Packard. I sleep in the nude. You're gonna want a pair of these. She sleepwalks. It's been a long month of uh, test flying and working and getting this stuff ready. Um, I, My dad, when I was younger, he just said, do whatever your body tells you, not what a clock tells you. And if you're tired, sleep 10 or 12 hours if your body says it needs it. And if it doesn't, why give up that time in your life? Enjoy it. So sometimes I sleep three hours, four hours. Uh, most of the time, I, contrary to what a lot of people might think, I might sleep five, six, seven. Seven's pretty rare, but five or six. But um, And then if my body needs 10, I'll, do, I'll, I'll sleep 10 hours. Um, so whatever it takes. But... For whatever reason, I, I can work through the night to the next day, and uh, I don't know I don't know why. I just does. I, I think it adapted from my childhood. So I'll I'll list out the wonderful people that have helped me along the way. Number one and foremost, almost the entire build is scrappy from the start. My buddy you've seen on the video, Ron Clark. Ron, I couldn't do it without you. I love you, buddy. Um, it was, it was primarily just me and Ron on, on everything. And then as we got closer to the end, we brought on my son, Dylan. So it became a three person team. And then as we started approaching the end um, and uh, getting ready to kind of final put it together, I had all kinds of friends show up. I had my business partner, Troy Mason, come in and start helping out, putting in some rivets in the wings. And he showed up several days. My wife right here, I haven't forgot you, I'm saving the best till last. I never forget about you, ever. <laughs> never, ever. I'm saving the best till last. So uh, the others that helped me out, uh, I briefly mentioned it. On the machining side of it, um, we do what we can in our own shop. Best Tugs, if you don't know, we build uh, aircraft moving equipment. Go buy a Best Tug. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we build best tugs, so when I can, I commandeer our own machines. We machine our own parts. Um, but on Scrappy, we brought in a good friend of mine that worked with me in my engineering firm I sold years ago. It was Prodigy Engineering. We sold that company off, and uh, Brigham did a lot of work with us. So Brigham, thank you so much. Brigham stepped up. He has a couple machines. He's machined a lot of stuff in the past and, uh, and a whole bunch of other parts. So Brigham, you're the best. You're the coolest guy ever. I gotta tell you, this woman right here, if it weren't for her, I would never build a plane because she supports me from the start to the finish to the all-nighters, um, takes care of our kids, brings me food. She's always worried I'm not gonna eat. I get, I get fixated on projects. I do have an addiction to completing a project. So if I start a project, that's why she doesn't want me to start one anytime soon. No, we gotta play with your toys. She wants me to play with the airplane for a bit. So we will we will probably cut back on videos a little bit. We'll kind of catch up the finish of the build and then we're gonna play with the airplanes for a bit. But 
If I didn't have this woman right here, I'd never get it done. So I love you. Thank all of you for hanging out and listening to this idiot ramble. I love all you guys. I love aviation. Thank you. You're all the best. Thank you for joining me at Oshkosh. I love all of you that followed along. We'll get into more later. Appreciate it. Thank you. Back to work.